In this video, we are going to take a quick look at the categorize query function. Uh, this is particularly useful when you have uh, a query where um, you are going to do a manual analysis of the results that you get from the query. Um, so I'll start by doing um, a fairly uh, straightforward, um, uh, a fairly straightforward version of the query for um, the English passive, uh, which is uh, B followed by, um, sorry, I'm getting mixed up there. B followed by uh, any number of adverbs followed by a past participle. Now, not all of these are actually passives. Um, and one thing that can be quite useful can be to annotate uh, the um, annotate the uh, the query to indicate which ones actually are and which ones are not. What this requires, uh, however, is um, effectively sorting the concordance lines into different groups, ones that are and ones that are not. This is what the categorized query function, which is found here, allows you to do. It's a two-stage effort. The first stage is to define your categories, and the second is to apply your categories. Now, uh, this first screen that you see here now is where we define the categories. Uh, let's just take a quick look at the instructions. Uh, so it's very easy to overlook those. Firstly, names can only contain letters, numbers, and the underscore character. That applies to both the name that you have up here, which is the name under which the categorized query will be saved, and the names of the categories uh, that you put down here. The categories unclear and other will be automatically added to the list because people usually want those two categories. You don't have to use them if you don't want, but they will be added automatically. Uh, and second and thirdly, selecting a default category means that all hits will be automatically set to this value. So if you've laid out your categories, then you can uh, choose one to be applied automatically and uh, go through and uh, 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 you can choose one to be applied automatically and then go through and change the ones that need to be changed after that. Uh, so let's call this passive because that's what it is and let's have really passive and let's make that the default since we expect most of them to be passive and uh, not passive for ones that don't that aren't passive although they look passive if we press submit now that will take us to a specialized version of uh, the um, of the concordance screen in which we can go through and apply those categories to the concordance lines. Now note, if you look here, we've actually lost some of the controls that we would normally see in the um, in the concordance display. We've lost them. Um, and that's because these are control these controls here, it doesn't really make sense to use them while we're in the process of sorting concordance lines into groups. Okay? Um, right, let's take a look through some of these. Because I picked really passive as the default, you will see that every single concordance line has got really passive next to it. But if I want to, I can use this drop down to switch it to not passive for a hit that is not actually a passive. Uh, I won't need to use other and unclear in this particular exercise, but they're there if I want to use them. So, um, most of these are really passive, but can I find one that isn't? Ooh, just to exemplify what I'm doing. Okay, I'm... None yet that aren't. Now, when we get to the bottom, if we want to go on to the next page, then we can use the buttons here as normal, 
or we can uh, use the controls here and say save values for this page and go to next well I haven't actually done anything here but if I had then that would help These all look like real examples. Well, this is depressing. <laughs> uh, I'll have a look at one more page. If I can't find a bad example uh, on the next page, then I'll pretend that one is bad, even though it really isn't. Proves that I'm doing this live. Okay. Oh, here's one that isn't. Uh, she has never been in any form of trouble before and is desperately upset. Uh, I suppose it depends how you analyse it grammatically, but I think most people would say that the upset is not so much a past participle there as it is an adjective, and therefore that would be more of a copula plus adjective than it is uh, uh, B plus past participle to make the passive. Um, well, you could argue about that, but let's uh, let's say that that one is not passive. Okay, so in this case, just because I found one, I'm going to say save values and leave categorization mode. And what that will do is take me straight out of the concordance system, and it will take me to the categorized query menu. Now, note that this is a menu entry. Here it is under user controls uh, which is accessible directly from the main menu at any time but you will be taken straight there um, you'll be taken straight there uh, after saying save and stop categorizing if you want to go back and categorize some more uh, I really will pick some fake ones now just for the sake of argument of sticking in a few more uh, there we go, done five, four or five more. You can come back as many times as you need to. It's saved on the system, uh, so you don't need to uh, worry about the query disappearing or anything. Okay, so the name of the query that it was saved under is here. You've got a list of the categories. You've got a little bit of detail about the hits. So there were 70,000 hits to begin with, and 100% of those have been categorized. That's because I set a default category. If I hadn't set a default category, then uh, I, only a few of those would have been categorized, the ones that I'd had time to do. And then the date at which you last did anything on it is given here. Now, under action, there's a few different things that you can do. Uh, obviously, one action is to go back and uh, change your category assignments, uh, but that's done over there. The actions that you can do over here are firstly delete it all, that is, delete all your categorizations, your complete list of analyses. We'll not do that. You can also add categories. Let's try that. So, if you do that, then you get uh, a little form here where it gives you the list of categories that exist already and then you can oops, uh, and then you can create a new one uh, so let's call the new one um, uh, what shall we call it uh, let's call it extra I can't actually think of an extra category that makes sense here but let's add the extra category just so that and there you can see it appears um, so, you can add categories at any time. Another thing that you can do, uh, and this is the default action here actually, is to separate categories. What does that mean? Well, what it means is that it splits up the existing query into, well in this case, five, because we've got five categories, five other queries. And each of those is saved separately. Now, think about what this means. It means that if I'd actually gone through all 70,000 examples or some random sample thereof and picked out the ones that are not passive, I could then 
do separate categories and get a single query with only the ones that are actually passive, which would allow me to come back later to that as a to that query and do subsequent analyses on it, knowing that I didn't have any bad hits in there. So let's see how this works. If I go separate categories and press go, then it will hum away. And see, now we have moved to the saved query screen, okay, which is just above categorized queries in, this, in the menu. And you can see, uh, well, this one here, my saved query is from some previous work I did uh, a long while ago. Uh, but because um, only two of those categories out of the five I had actually had any hits in them, there was the really passive, which was the default, and then there were the six that I changed to be not passive, uh, they've been um, uh, they've been split out into two separate saved queries. So if I click on uh, not passive now to go into that, you'll see it's just a normal concordance containing just the three. And you can see here that up at the top, as part of the history of things that have been done to this query, it says manually categorized as not passive. So there we are. You could now do whatever you like with this. You could categorize it again if you wanted. That would, you know, categorize it in some different way. Uh, that could be done quite easily. Uh, likewise, the really passives. This is a saved query, which will come up as an exactly as as uh, as a normal concordance. Uh, and these. Uh, and these queries, you can delete the ones that you don't want, work with the ones that you do want, do anything you need to do to them in order to, you know, uh, get the analysis that you want working. Um, and if ever you decide, oh, I've made a mistake, what you can do is you can go back into the categorized query, make the amendments, and then separate the categories again. So, that's about uh, the long and short of how categorized queries work. Uh, in this case, my example with the passive was based on a fairly basic use of this, which is to, for instance, uh, which is to separate out hits that I wanted from hits that I didn't want using a search that will sometimes get some things that I didn't want. Um, but that's far from the only use of the categorized query system, you can also use it to, um, uh, you can also use it to classify, for instance, if you've done a search for a word that is uh, a homophone or a homonym or uh, a word that has uh, a serious polysemy, then you could categorize a query into the different meanings that that word has, or something along those lines. It, it's a very flexible function, um, although not one that many people uh, know a lot about. So, I hope this video has been informative.